Hi, and welcome to Let's Talk Books, a little segment I'm doing for the Powell River Public Library during our closure. Um, it is where we will talk books together. I will talk books, and hopefully you will uh, share with me what you're reading um, while you are practicing social distancing. Uh, last week I talked a little bit about Birds Are Life, which is probably one of my favorite books. I've likely recommended it to some of you you over the service desk or maybe in the stacks. Um, talking books is one of the, my most favorite things about working at the library. Uh, we love recommending books, I love hearing what you're reading, and uh, lots of people love to share those titles with me um, as we meet throughout the day. And so I thought this would be a place where we could continue to do that together. Um, so a couple of books that I've recently read um, are this one here. Uh, it is called My Father, Fortune Tellers, and Me by Euphemia Fantetti. Uh, this book I ordered around Christmas time um, and it kept slipping down my to read pile as books often do um, because I get books from the library and they have due dates and I know often folks have holds on them so I try and get them back as quickly as possible. Uh, so this one kept slipping to the bottom of the tree pile and so I thought, heck, I've got nothing but time right now, so, uh, nothing but time when I'm not working. Um, so I thought, uh, why not work through some of these books that have been on my bookshelf, uh, that I've been meaning to read. Uh, and this one I'm really glad I picked up this week because it is, first of all, beautifully written. And it is such an interesting story. It is nonfiction. It is a memoir. Um, and it's kind of deals with themes of Im immigrants to Canada, Italian immigrants, first and second generation, deals with uh, mental illness as well as uh, family trauma. And it is just really, really well written. I love the structure. Um, she uses, I'm just going to find one here, uh, tarot cards as the chapter headings. So this one here is The Lovers, for those of you who are familiar with tarot cards. And um, and she also has the moon cycles, which is a theme in the book, uh, in the corners as well. So that was one I just recently finished. And then I picked up uh, another one from my bookshelf. And it is When Women Were Birds by Terry Tempest Williams. Uh, this one is also nonfiction. Um, Terry is a writer from the United States, has written 14 books, um, and this one is a memoir, but it also, for writers, deals with this idea of voice and where our voice comes from. Um, and as, all, as with all of Terry's book, has some really beautiful nature writing. Uh, she is a nature enthusiast, and she uh, touches upon where that kind of passion came from in this book and it is really beautiful. I'm really enjoying the writing. It is poetic and just so kind of comforting um, when there's so much kind of dark, harsh news coming around these days. So I really enjoy this one. I'm about halfway through, so maybe I'll be able to share more with you next week. Um, now I wanted to talk about uh, a book recommendation. It is kind of the focus of today's uh, Let's Talk Books, and it is this title here, um, Dear Evelyn by Kathy Page, which I think was recently an afternoon book club book pick. I may have got that wrong. Um, anyways, and uh, I picked up this book because I interviewed Kathy for a podcast I do for the BC and Yukon Book Prizes, and it's not a book I would normally gravitate towards. Um, I don't typically read historical fiction. I actually would probably not call this historical fiction if I was going to name it something, even though I just kind of called it that. Uh, it's a bit more complex than that, and it really has themes that I think so many of us can relate to as far as relationships and family and what we go through um, in couples. And so I found it just really captivating and I became really just like fixated on the characters, on Evelyn and Harry, who the story is kind of centered around. And so the story takes place um, kind of before and after World War II. 
they meet uh, as young adults before World War II, fall in love and get married during the war, have children, and then have to find their new normal afterwards. And uh, Evelyn is just one of the most interesting characters I think I've read in a while. Um, she is this kind of complex and conflicting character because she has she had a very hard upbringing she brings some of that into her marriage with Harry um, you want to love her but sometimes you want to reach into the pages of the book and just kind of shake her because she does things that you you understand as a reader but you also are like come on girl like do we have to go there so uh, it's just such a fascinating book and I, I really really loved it and um, it's one I keep thinking of uh, long after I've finished it. So I was hoping to read a little bit of it for you. Um, this bit comes about midway through the book. Um, one of the things that is nice about this book is the chapters almost have this feel of short stories because they're vignettes, these kind of moments in their life. Um, and you kind of move through their life that way. There are significant parts instead of it being the day-to-day -day kind of intricacies of their marriage. So this um, chapter that I'm going to read from is called House Garden House. It comes about midway through the book and it is the moment where uh, Harry and Evelyn move into their house, their kind of dream house uh, that they build together after the war. And in the scene they're inviting, they've now brought their parents, Harry and Evelyn's parents, to see the house for the first time. He heard his parents and Evelyn's mother across the road from the bus stop, then leads them slowly up the avenue, passing one by one the decaying Victorian mansions destined to become old people's homes, apartments, and new developments. It's warm, even at ten. After a pause at the post box to catch their breaths, he steers them down and right, past the Cheshire home for the disabled and the rambling turn of the century property across from it. Thereafter, the plots and buildings on the road, while still detached and well built, are somewhat smaller and lower. He brings the party to a halt and indicates the house with a sweep of his arm. There it is. It's less than half the size of the one behind them. Even so, there are gasps, and his mother takes hold of his arm. Everything's so crisp looking, she says, like a painting. So many windows, you'll have to pay someone to clean them, Evelyn's mother chimes in, adding, and aren't you afraid the neighbors will spy on you? The windows, Harry points out, are metal framed with hardwood sills, very low maintenance. Well, well, his father says. He stuffs his hands into his pockets and gazes at the width and height of the place, as if it were a spaceship come to land. Nice bit of brickwork. Well, well, so that's the house. The house. Those words on their lips twenty times a day for years on end, not to speak of in their minds. It took nine months to build. He had to visit and inspect the site almost every weekend. The plot, a third of an acre, his choice slopes gently from the back towards the street, good for drainage and excellent for looking at the back garden from the house. Like all the others, the house begins 30 feet from the road, runs across most of the width of the plot. It's 52 feet wide and 30 feet deep. It's built with cavity walls he explains to his dumbstruck audience, in a blend of London stock bricks from, for the facing and cheaper engineered bricks for the inside skin. Metal ties and weep holes have been used as per the regulations. The major load-bearing wall that runs the length of the house is also brick. Other internal walls are stud work. 42,000 bricks were used to build the house and 2,800 roof tiles. The builder tried to cheat them by char charging for 20% more than he used, but Harry spotted the discrepancy. Swindler, pick the wrong man. We sent him packing, he tells them. Let's go, let's cross now and go in. Evelyn will be waiting. I think she's made a cake. 
Of course, there'll be lawn on either side of the path here. The front door is solid oak. Internal doors, as they'll soon see, are veneered mahogany. No paneling, no dust traps. The modern look. Central light fittings, he tells them, pausing on the open porch. In every room, two in the living room, electrical outlets on at least three walls in every room. And of course, new curtains made by Evelyn in the downstairs windows. He doesn't mention the cost of them or that the upstairs ones are, as a result, just borrowed nets. They'll have to wait until at least the end of the year for something more substantial. So that is Dear Evelyn by Kathy Page. And uh, that's just a snippet of the beginning of the chapter, House Garden House. And if you are looking for a copy of this book, we do have one at the library. Of course, you will not be able to access it right now as we are closed, um, but be sure to check out Overdrive as we have lots of great titles available online, as well as RB Digital, where you can also find eBooks and e-audiobooks. And my colleague, Mark Marlino, has been making some really great videos to help people navigate those resources. And you can find those on YouTube. We're also linking, them, linking to them on our Facebook as well. Uh, so until next week, I hope that you share with me what you're reading. Um, I know lots of you have great home libraries, read eBooks and audiobooks, and uh, hopefully maybe even have a little stash of library books at home to carry you through. So be sure to uh, send a picture of the title of your book, send a little video, or I know some of you even uh, wrote um, in the comments about what you were reading as well. So I love hearing um, the titles you're reading. And as I said, we can still share one of my most favorite moments of uh, being at the library, even though we don't get to be in the space together. So I hope you're all well, and I look forward to uh, hearing from you online.